Hi, I'm Ella Degan, and today Ava Robinson, Anna Cardenas, and myself will be presenting Project IRL Playful Collocated Interactions with Mobile Augmented Reality. We're presenting on behalf of ourselves and our co-authors. Why is it important to work on co-location? There is a growing societal issue of tech often disrupting to our in-person interactions. As stated by Sherry Turkle in her book, Alone Together, every time you check your phone in company, what you gain is a hit of stimulation, and what you lose is what a friend, teacher, parent, lover, or coworker just said, meant, or felt. So most of today's tech does not explicitly support in-person interactions, but rather they focus on remote interactions. Additionally, many human computer interaction scholars have drawn attention to this gap in literature on designing for co-located technology. We took this opportunity to reimagine and reinvent ways in which technology can support rather than detract from co-located interactions, turning people's attentions away from their phones and instead towards each other. So why use augmented reality? Based on literature review, we identified five re main reasons why we think augmented reality is well suited to support playful, co-located social experiences. Augmented reality is grounded as it transforms the shared physical world. It is also embodied, playful, social, and memorable. We operationalize these design considerations into concrete techniques by mapping them to design attributes. We adopted a research through design approach in our process to explore how we can enhance playful co-located social experiences by using augmented reality. In this work, we introduced Project IRL, a suite of five mobile apps we created to explore novel ways of supporting playful co-located interactions amongst friends and family with AR. Today, we will highlight one of the apps we created, called Face It. We developed a design framework with a range of attributes including device arrangement, enablers, and interaction type. Our apps attempt to explore a wide range of these attributes, for example, using different enablers like faces, feet, or dogs to trigger an AR experience. More details on this framework can be found in our paper. Face It, one of our apps, was inspired by the game mechanic of passing an object between people, such as in the classic game Pop It. To play Face It, players must pass one phone around quickly to compete with each other. Users' faces are the enablers in this experience and are augmented with different face filters. They must follow the gesture instructions such as turn right, open mouth, or pass it before the timer runs out. You can try out the latest versions of our apps by scanning the snap codes shown here on the Snapchat camera. I'll quickly go over our other apps. In feature films, Feet enable the experience as parents and their children engage in a story while their feet are augmented as sock puppets. In Treasure Treat, dogs enable the experience. Dog owners team up with their dogs to collect virtual coins spread around in the physical space. In Milky Way, a planet and cows are augmented from a marker show on a shared TV. Players compete for space to catch as many virtual cows as possible. In Freezing Frenzy, players' full bodies enable the experience and are augmented with snow. Players chase each other to cover their opponents with virtual eyes before time runs out. More details of these apps can be found in our paper. To evaluate our apps, we used interviews and participant observations with 101 participants who played with the apps in groups of two or three. We then used a hybrid qualitative method of thematic analysis and synthesized our results under four main themes that relate to the design attributes mentioned earlier. One, device arrangement. For example, whether the experience requires people to share a single phone or use multiple phones. Two, the role of enablers. That is the physical objects that trigger and are the focus of the AR experience. Three, affordances of augmentation. That is the features of the tech that enhance its potential to encourage various aspects of social interaction. And four, co-located play. Our study found that device arrangement sh shapes proxemics. In some apps, we observed our participants physically move closer together and coordinate their movements when using one phone as the device arrangement. For example, Facebook participants mentioned how they had to sit close to make up the time because the time is only one to two seconds to pass the phone. Next, we saw that enablers can become social focal points. Using body, spaces, pets, and feet to trigger AR content, we encouraged and guided participants to focus on each other, move in synchronicity, 
and touch or react to each other. For example, participants noted freezing frenzy got them moving and interacting with their friends and appreciated that it got them up out of their chairs. Next, we observed the affordances of augmentation and its ability to enhance various aspects of social interactions. We observed participants being entertained by augmentation, such as being surprised by new face filters and face it. We also saw users playfully experimenting with the AR and using our prototypes in unexpected ways. For example, we saw one pair of users experiment with the AR tracking in feature films by using their thumbs instead of their feet as characters. Finally, we observed findings related to tech to make in-person play engaging and inviting. Participants discussed how having the apps on their phones makes it easy to initiate the interactions and motivates them to engage with others, making their screen time more social and interactive. For example, a feature films participant mentioned, it's not like watching a TV show where it's totally passive. It's something you do together. It's like a good five minute activity for you and your kid. Additionally, there's an ease to it where you don't need a lot. You don't have to go pick a book off of your bookshelf. More details of our study findings can be found in our paper. We synthesized the learnings from the literature review and the findings from our user study to develop a set of design guidelines. These guidelines can be used by researchers and practitioners who aim to develop augmented reality experiences for co-located interactions. We highlight some of these guidelines and you can find the full list in our paper. Encouraging touch through proxemics is one of them. We propose creating a digital experience that gets people close enough to one another so that they can touch. Coordination, we suggest nudging person-to-person -person communication using interactions that require coordination, like creating playful scenarios that require people to share information. Embodiment, focus on the augmentation on bodies. We suggest to steer people's attention towards one another by using their faces, feet, arms and full bodies as enablers for the interaction. Finally, we suggest building a familiar play, drawing inspiration from game experiences that people might already be familiar with in the analog world. For example, using things like board games and toys. So thank you for listening. Um, we invite you to try out our augmented reality lenses on letsplayirl.com or by using the snap codes to, and learn more about the research in our paper.